Hello, this is Tessa with Side Stitch Magic, and I wanted to quickly show you a couple of tricks that I found trying to re-thread empty spools for my Presto 2. When I bought the Presto 2, I didn't realize that there were some limits on what I could do as far as using cones of thread. Um, and I'll show you what I mean first before I show you how I've learned how to thread these empty spools. It's kind of funny and tongue-in-cheek on some of this, but uh, we sure had fun coming up with some different ideas. So first of all, that's the type of thread that I use. I usually use thread on cones because I have a cover stitch and serger and I was trying to figure out when I bought the machine I had asked about the fact that you know is there a way to use a cone of thread and of course they said there was and there is you can set your thread on one of these cone holders here the problem is is that the only way to make it work with my machine is to thread it through these little openings here on the dust cover and where I live out in the country, I try to keep everything as dust free as possible because just in general, we get a lot of dust living out in the country. There's a lot of dirt surrounding the property. Um, we have a couple of um, farm animals. So it's just important that I try to keep as much dust out of the machines as possible. So the, I asked my hubster, you know, I was trying to figure out a way to thread my empty spools and I looked on YouTube and there were a couple of different videos but they didn't work for me because they were using tape hi Marlin and um, this is one of our farm animals he's our farm dog and um, so anyway we were trying to figure out a way that we could re-spool this <laughs> and um, hi sweet boy He's our rescue dog. He's a St. Pyrenees. He's half um, St. Bernard and half Pyrenees. And when we first got him, we didn't know what the heck he was. He was all shaved down because he had been running amok for months. And um, his hair was just a matted mess. So when we got him, he was shaved almost to the skin. And then as we, you know, a couple months came and went and his hair started growing out, we were like, what the heck? Um... So anyway, that's another reason to keep machines clean is because we have um, animals. So anyway, here is an example of what we did. This is what my hubster helped me with. And basically what he did is he took something he found out in the garage and he set this up to where I could put it in these small spools. Now this is, this is Guterman thread and I bought um, a package of these and I bought them from a small quilting company. I'm trying to stay away from buying a bunch of stuff on Amazon. I'm trying to buy from, more from uh, smaller local shops. Um, but I bought a couple of different, you know, kits of, of uh, thread. And these spools, these small spools are perfect because not only do they fit well in my machine here, but they're also the right size if I want to work on something that I don't use a lot as far as color. So lime or yellow would be a very um, a very similar color to what I, I rarely use. I do have it and I offer it um, with my custom makes, but it's not something that I use all the time. So therefore I have these small little spools. And in this example, I'm gonna show you what he basically came up with. It's kind of cool and it absolutely worked. So what we did is we basically took this little gadget here and put that in the drill. Whoops, I think I'm going the wrong way. Okay, I'm gonna undo this a little bit because then you won't be able to see how we did this. But basically, all we did is we just kept running the thread back and forth on this spool. I'm going really slow, but you can go a heck of a lot faster. I'm just kind of showing you how we did that. And then that threaded this, and it worked out really well because that's what that's how what we use to thread this. And then I can fit this in my machine, and it works great. So that's one way, and that's when you have these really small little spools. 
The next size spool, and this actually works perfectly for this Presto too, in my opinion. This is like, this is a really good size spool um, to use for the machine. So when I was using these and I ran out of thread, again, I wanted to find a way that I could re-thread these using my cones, not just to save on money, but because I don't necessarily utilize all the colors all the time. So it really just kind of depends on what I'm using. So black and silver and white, purple, those colors I use all the time. So to buy these and continually buy them in colors that I use all the time, that's fine. But something like, you know, a teal, you know, other colors like that. It's nice to have the option to just thread something that's going to give you the use for what you need it for a couple of items and then move on to something else. So what I tried to do is I tried to come up with another way and I watched several YouTube videos and they were using tape and stuff like that and it just didn't work for my machine. It might work for other machines but the tape was not holding the spool. So then I tried taking a bobbin with a dowel, which I don't have the dowel anymore, and I tried to, um, I took something flat and I tried to like, you know, use Gorilla Glue to hold that, and it just wobbled too much. It, I could use it, but it wasn't, it was not something that I could have used all the time. So I was trying to think of something that I could, I could use any time I needed to thread a spool that was empty. So then I came up with this idea where I took a, an empty bobbin and this tacky stuff that you use for um, putting pictures on the walls and stuff like that. I use it for, um, I have coasters and stuff like that that I put in a display in a shadow box for running races and stuff like that. And it holds, a, it holds really heavy cast metal so I didn't think it would be a problem to hold um, the spool for what I needed. So basically what I did is I took this and I put a piece of the, the tacky stuff on this and then I put it in my machine which you can see here that's what I've done. I have the, the tacky stuff on, right on top of an empty bobbin and I have my bobbin pushed aside so that I can thread it. So what what I do is I basically once I get it started so I a lot of people tape it and I find that as long as I wrap it around a good five or six times I don't really need to tape it and you can see that I practice with other colors underneath here but basically all I do is see if I can get this going here is I just run the thread up and down the spool And thread it and it works pretty good um, the only thing that I found is that if I if I end up using the tacky stuff too many times then sometimes it'll get a little bit loose it'll get a little bit wobbly um, but for the most part I've been able to re-thread quite a few of these without any problem so, you know, I just basically keep doing this until I get either enough thread for the project that I'm working on, or you can actually fill up a whole spool. So that's kind of what I do. And, you know, this tacky stuff, you can actually keep like working with it. And if it starts getting like, you know, too wobbly on the top, then I, I just simply hold the top like this. I don't know if you can see that but you can just hold the top too and it works great. You just kind of hold the top if it starts getting a little bit too wobbly after using it. And then you just kind of run this along and it, and it works great. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you because I think, you know, it's one of the things that I wasn't expecting when I bought this machine that I wasn't, that I was gonna have this issue with having to run thread through the top of my machine. And for what, whatever reason, I just never thought that that was um, very useful. I love the machine. I, I wouldn't trade it. I love the machine. Um, but I wish that they had come up with a way that you could actually thread through the dust cover. Um, I think the reason why a lot of it didn't happen is because you can see on my machine that's where all the stitches are. So it kind of shows you what the stitches are and, and what you have to use for your digital 
um, display to, to get the right stitches. But anyway, I hope that you found that helpful. You know, I mean, it may seem hokey to some people, but it's what works for me and coming up with ideas that, that <laughs> I have just around the house that'll make this work. So anyway, take care. I hope everybody's safe out there and I hope you enjoyed the video.